Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Reva and welcome to Pandora First Contact in my infinite search of finding the awesome space time 4x game. This is something in between Civ and Endless Space in that Pandora is basically the human race has gone to a different planet and has settled there and it's not Alpha Centauri which is of course the most famous one so far in this genre and has gotten a lot of critical acclaim over the years. I still like to play it. I will maybe one day also do one on civiliz in No, not Civilization. It's Sid Meier though, but it's Alpha Centauri basically. You go to the nearest planet, Alpha Centauri, but there are aliens. And Pandora does a lot of the same thing. And it's basically, I guess, a precursor to Beyond Earth, which is coming out later this year. Anyway, let's have a look around in this game and see how it is, and let's try and play it for a little bit. There are six factions in the world, or at least from Earth that came here. You have the Divine Ascension, which is basically the um, Facebook religion social media hybrid uh, thing. And Lady Lilith Vermilion, uh, the leader of the faction, is seen as a god by the people in the faction they are stronger in attacking they have a bit more morale and they are slower on research basically then there is the Imperium led by James Heed or Hyde uh, Admiral he's basically um, Imperium is a over-the-top defense contractor a military group for mercenaries for sale that became a, well, the true dominant military power of Earth in the 21st century. And they don't want to give that up going towards Pandora. And then there's the Noxium Corporation, the most influential, well, capitalist venture of uh, our time now. And it's the game starts in 2107 when uh, humanity touches down on Pandora. And yeah, so they basically are all about the money. Then there's the Solar Dynasty, which is China gone fascist almost. It's a weird hybrid between communism and fascism. And this is the leader, Prime Minister Yun Xi. And when uh, we started colonizing the solar system, basically this guy or his father, one of the two, decided to rename China to the Solar Dynasty. Or Dynasty. Um, yeah, one of the two. Um, there are Salvum, basically all the uh, focus, well, prote protest groups like Greenpeace and everyone bonded together and became, well, fighting for Earth and pollution, trying to get rid of it, of course. And now in Pandora, they want to keep the same uh, thing going on and that people are sa basically keep this planet safe and they are all about less alien aggression and about being well more peaceful as well finally Togre University which is basically research without well morals morals basically they go all the way for any type of uh, research they want to get and they just want to do it and that they have caused a lot of the advances made in the 21st century that allowed the humanity to go to Pandora in the first place um, I'm going to play as Imperium, because they sound pretty cool. They have more power, so they're stronger. They heal faster. They get some free training, so all their units are quite strong. But they do pay 50% more just to have all their units, because they are that much more powerful. And they are mercenaries, so they want money for it as well. World size, and there are four, well, tiny, small, medium, large, and huge, so five sizes. We're going to play on a medium-sized map. There are not a lot of um, types to start off with, but I believe in advanced you can definitely decide to... Um, actually, no, there are just these three options, Pangaea, Archipelago, or Continents. And we're going to play on a Pangaea map. Oh, you can actually send in more AIs, and they all have different strength, but that means you get uh, multiple um, factions, though which is in itself interesting. So if I pick these, oh, actually you can only have one of each faction. So maybe this is for multiplayer purposes. You can play with more than six people. But standard is just six people. 
Um, <clears throat> research, that's the fun thing about this game. It is uh, completely randomized, the tech tree every time. Most of the tags per era are known in that era. You know what you can research and where you have to go. But it's randomized every time you play the game. I'm going to play on medium difficulty. I get a slight advantage over us just because I don't know the game that well. I just had a, just one test game, seeing how it runs. And it runs beautifully. It does look pretty cool. Alien Aggression. Barbarians on steroids. There are a ton of them. And it's... Yeah, it, it'll be a while before you can actually eradicate any aliens. I'll play at a normal uh, standard pace of time. So let's get into the game. We will probably get maybe get an introduction as well. It is the year 2107 AD and mankind has reached out to the stars. After decades of exploration, discovering nothing but dead rock, our quest for a second Earth has finally come to an end. A terrestrial planet in the Nashira system has become the symbol for humanity's hopes and dreams of a new paradise. The most powerful factions, distinct in their ideologies and beliefs, have sent expeditionary forces to stake their claim to this new world. And here we are. You are Vivian Godinier, leader of the Ecologic Terra Salvum. Reckless industries and the war for natural resources have bled out old Earth. Our once rich and abundant homeworld is nothing but a shadow of its former self. While other factions might be on a path to repeat the same mistakes again, you and your followers have respect for the environment and humanity, treating the planet and its children with the respect they deserve. Okay, so we are suddenly now a different faction. That's actually weird. Um, Yeah, let's go back to the main menu and actually start a game as Imperium. Look, we are Imperium, so if I click start, if we will get the introduction video again, but I will skip it this time. Here we go. You are James Hyde of the Militaristic Imperium. Your speciality is warfare, with expertise in all of its facets. And your Imperial legions are feared across the solar system. Your society follows a strict military code, with members learning discipline and the chain of command from early on in childhood. When on duty, any Imperial soldier is expected to excel. But the Imperium rewards that with a very high rate of pay. Now we do have the right one. <coughs> okay, so we start off with a colonizer and a colonial troop. And normally they have one and two strength, but because of our faction, they're already stronger than they are supposed to be. Now we landed next to something called a Maxallan field. Um, filled a very valuable mineral that's tough to extract. Okay. Tundra with fungus covered, which does give a lot of pollution. And we could move if we want to first. So let's actually send in our scout first. Oh, look, it's an observatory, which is a... Well, we'll get there next turn, probably. And I think I'm going to move one over to the plains here. Settle there, then we can expand into the Maxillon field and the observatory rather quickly. 
and get a little bit further away from the um, mess that is the fungus. We'll probably have this city is what it is because our citizens are what they are. A great Plato. day. Yeah, thank you, Plato. This is a great day for mankind. Today we've established our first habitation on a foreign world. Scientific and mechanical marvels it took to bring us to this point should not be belittled, but it's better to look to the future rather than the past. Now, here's our first city, Huai Hei. Not sure if those names are always the same or that it's randomized. And here's the city uh, view. Now, things we have, or of course our headquarters, which give us some uh, special stuff, uh, including defense when uh, well defending. So, we have one population, and we can assign population to either be farmers, miners, workers, or scientists. Scientists basically give you research points. So if I, I currently get research four per turn, of which two comes from the scientists. There's a bonus for having morale, and having lower taxes means you get more morale. Basically, tax uh, concerns that, and also buildings and tiles in the world can expand the amount of morale you get. Pollution has a negative effect on morale, and that in the more industry you waste, the worse that is, of course. Uh, workers are those who build stuff for you. So if I switched my if were scientist to being a worker, um, all my production is in half because every worker provides to production at this moment. But a worker also uses minerals. And right now we uh, use 4.2 minerals just from production. If we move the worker away back to being a scientist, we only use two for production and we get two per turn in minerals. So you need to balance your mining together with your production. And that's actually quite interesting mechanic. Uh, miners, of course, go mine for minerals. So today he's working on this hill, I think. So every tile can be worked. Oh, and you can see we can have two miners because we have two tiles that produce uh, ton, well minerals and we can have six farmers for every tile that produces food including the tile we settled on so the hills don't actually allow us to do that and food is needed to give your people well food to grow and to be there but actual growth is what makes the cities grow and when you get to eight people then your borders start growing because you will need to fill up these seven slots and with workers and then your city can grow beyond that and as you can see you can decide where you want to oh, where you want to grow first and it is oh there's golden dendar hills apparently yeah we will get a lot of achievements I haven't played for a long time you can decide when you want to uh, where you want to expand to and as you can see right now, it takes 42 turns before we can even get to that tile because that's how long it will take with our current growth. Now we're going to put our scientists back in so we actually get some quicker research, which is really important, especially in the beginning. And I'm going to produce growth, which means two production is will be transformed into one growth every turn. And this means that uh, our growth grew from six turns to three turns but it does mean that we have to keep on growing people basically and here's the observatory a large intact observation tower so it uh, works as both a increase in research by 50 percent if it's in the city range and it will um, also count as a lookout tower when you're on it you see i think three tiles instead of the regular two now here's the research tree, and this is just the first era, the colonization era. And these are all the researches we can do. Now, last, the first game I played, colonization fervor, was in the sec in the third tree. And orbital reconnaissance was actually also, it was actually in the second tree, I think, yeah. Infernal pre-igniter, which gives you, well, hellfire which is, of course, a flamethrower. It was in the first tier, so it's different. And because we are Imperium, we start with three field training as well as three already ready. And a field training basically ranks up your units in 
a territory and makes them stronger forever but it will take they will take some damage when doing that um, every rank the unit has so if you do it at a lower level it will take a lot less damage so I will do that once and then we can decide what we want to do and I think I want to start with a little bit more food and growth so I will go for a synthetic fertilizer and then follow that up with a colony ship dismantling which is a one-time rebuilding uh, project so you have project and you have op uh, you have projects and you have operations operations are things you can build in a city and then deploy anywhere on the map and projects are one-time constructions that will help you do uh, do whatever they will give excuse me for that burp so the field training operation will rank a unit by plus two so currently this is a level uh, one rank because it was our first one it's free so if we deploy this operation on them they will take 0.3 damage but they are now rank three instead and it would only take one turn to heal them but we will first let them run they are still actually at more health than they were just before okay so our first um unit of uh, the enemy we have discovered a site flocks of these flying predators travel large distances each day searching for prey while smaller objects like humans seem relatively safe we've received reports of skite mercilessly attacking our undefended machinery and there's also a ruin behind it so we are going to take it we had a hundred percent chance on victory did take a lot of damage now, so we are going to have to heal up before discovering more. And that's a 8 strength unit that just appeared. A devourer, massive winged beast, the devourer shadow is widely known as the harbinger of death. A harbinger? Hmm, I thought it was a harbinger, but the word, okay. With its meter long jaws and claws, the creature can lift and swallow even our heaviest tanks. So right now we are... Yeah, our city has already grown to size 2, which means we will also have a farmer. And we kind of need a farmer to actually get more food to be able to have more people at the moment. And I think actually building a second unit right now is much more preferable than growing faster. We'll still grow in 6 turns, but it's still it's better than when getting that early growth I think is really good. Cultivation facts, facility building, so it's a building you build in, in your cities. They will give 25% more food from farmers and plus two food in general. Huh. So if we were to build this thing, it will take us 16 turns currently because we have no workers, so we only have the base production. But then it will give us two food, which keeps a person happy. Every single person in a city needs two food uh, to sustain itself. And you have a global accumulation of food, so you could actually have more food and spread it around the world, I believe. But we're going to keep up with just the colonial dude. So we have colony ship dismantling next. There we go, 0 0.6 healed again. And that should be completely healed. So, first the, the observatory. We can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us the less taste we shall have for the destruction of our race. Wonder and humility are wholesome emotions, and they do not exist side by side with a lust for destruction. When the first... Ex Carson. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the quote is over, but then she still says who said it. When the first explorer hove into view of these impossible towers, we assumed they were a form of gigantic local fauna. A scaled-up thistle, perhaps, that drew its life from pressure differentials between the atmospheric layers. Approaching closer, we l took them to be astronomical observatories. Why else would one build something so skyscraping? They are observatories, yes, but not as we assumed. From inside, the facets of the crystalline domes provide a perfect view of the surrounding countryside. And obscure antique devices inside allow us to peer within the crust of the planet itself or to track the skittering beasts on its surface. Properly utilized, this will provide a great leap forward for our research. 
Now, as you can see, it has a three range of vision. It doesn't cross the second hill. Uh, normally, you don't see beyond hills yourself anyway. It also doesn't see the mountain here because this hill and that mountain. But here I can see a resource which we will go explore pretty soon. We First, could imagine nothing pleasanter than to spend all of our lives digging for relics of the past. Ponrick Schliemann. So, a ruin, basically what it's always been, a goodie hut. And we got some free research, which actually allowed us to instantly complete our colony ship. And if this is a project, so it's a one-time build, you can do once, and it will give us 16 food and 32 minerals when we do complete it. And we've also discovered a hive, a colony of xenomorphs. Basically, it's a barbarian encampment. This one has a queen and a drone in it. I have 0% chance on victory right now because the queen is quite strong. Because it's in her own hive and everything, so yeah. But for now, they are actually not hostile. Which is good for us, for now. Um, yeah, I do would like to get that internal infernal pre-igniter. So we're gonna have to get xenology. But that will allow us to be a lot more powerful as well. So, um, you can move quickly through hills, actually. And then you can move on to a mountain if you so desire as well. Um, mountains and forests take two movement, but only if you move in there first, of course. Just like regular games of Civ. Back here, I'm actually going to explore this now. It's a Garden of Eden, which gives six food and one morale bonus. Beautiful to behold, this idyllic area is unnaturally rich in nutrients and its plant growth is unequaled. Some say it could sustain a megalopolis by itself. Xenology project that gives less alien aggression. That's actually not bad to have. So we'll go for the infernal pre-igniter. And then next could be quantization, but we'll see. Huai Hai has grown and is still working on the um, colonial trooper. I will queue up a colony ship dismantling after so we can get those extra resources. They're quite useful early on. I do want to explore a little bit some savannah there. There is a, a spitter here, which is an uh, alien artillery unit. But it only, it only has 0.5 strength, so we have a really high victory chance power wow we are strong they have less defense apparently they're weaker in forest oh we've discovered a new device the xenomorph ferropod um i'll show you what that is once we reach our next research with the infernal pre-igniter you there you are already rank one ah so that's what the special field training it's only i'll have them be our city uh, guardians only one turn to heal, so I'll move once to see what's here. And that would be a Devourer. Oh god, they are so powerful. I have, in the other, the first game I played, I never got to a point where I could even try and beat them. I didn't play for very long, let's just say that. Uh, let's see, there's more sites here. Um, can we actually... Oh, we can... Ah, so we can attack, because we don't move onto the tile when we attack, we can actually kill something that's, well, in the air. <laughs> I like my enemies the way I like my toast. Charred. Yeah, that's the hellfire. So, we've uh, discovered a new weapon and we'll go to the workshop. You can build all your units and you kind of have to build all of your own units. So, we'll build a new unit. And you can, we can currently build a colonizer, which cannot attack, a former, which cannot attack, and a colonial trooper, which of course can attack. So this is the basic colonial trooper that we already have. So now we can decide we want to give it a different weapon. We want to give it Hellfire. And it uh, will now have a flamethrower instead of just a machine gun. We could have armor, but we haven't researched any armor yet. And now for a device, it's an extra thing you add to it. And... Well, the Xenomorph Ferropod basically converts units to your side, converts the local animal wildlife. I'm going to have to rename this, of course, and we shall name this the Hellbat, because I'm a big fan of StarCraft. 
And that's about it. Yeah. Um, can I? It I can attack, but we have a really low chance on victory because he actually has defense power in the forest. I also have strength bonus in the forest. I will just heal up first. Research um, quantization. While it does seem good, I think we should go with analytical dynamics to unlock the seeker ATV, which is a chassis for vehicles. So we got the colony ship, so we got a lot of bonus minerals and a lot of food. And it is time to get a, well, former, well, good, we could only form, there are only three tiles to reform, and the forest is actually pretty damn good to have, so, yeah, I don't just want to go and get that. Habitat, we currently have eight. There's also a maximum number of people you can have in your city, and you need to actually build suburbs in your territory to expand that. So I'm just going to build a colonizer now to expand our uh, infrastructure. It would it, we could rush it for 512. We could rush a hellbed for 160. Basically you just buy the unit and it will be done the day the turn after. Now there are multiple units here and we have a 100% chance of victory, but a 73% estimated casualty rate, which is pretty damn bad. Hot Springs. To greatly enjoy the steaming bath of hot springs, which give them a reprieve from the daily burns of colonial life and time to renew their spirit. Plus four morale. I'm actually going to settle here, then, because that's one, two, so that's reasonably close to my capital. I could actually settle here because I don't think you can grow beyond the first uh, two borders. Doesn't appear to be. You might be able to though. But yeah, so either here or there. But if we settle there, we would have to grow quite large to actually get the hot springs first. And if we settle one of these two tiles, we will also get the Zenite flowers, which are a production boost to the to the city they're in. So I'm actually going to settle on the savannah here. Once the colonizer is done, of course. And we have discovered the Seeker ATV, a light mechanical unit. So now we can choose a different class of, of driver. And for instance, the Hellfire cannot be used by anyone but the troopers. So only troopers can use these. And let's see, 100% still really high. Um, way too high chance of uh, taking casualties so I will go damage evasion gives us the illusion field which uh, is a also a device and it will give you more defense uh, let's get the man mineral refining into remote autonomous harvesting then next uh, you can actually move through so I didn't because I did a quick move I did not see what was in the hive which is actually quite silly oh there's a ruin over here and our city has grown again we now have two farmers working we still have bo surplus food but eh, we're getting close to a point where we actually will lose food from population oh you only lose one food for each population that's actually pretty good and we make six per turn so we have two from our base tile and we have two from each of these coastal tiles so growth-wise, we should be doing okay in the long run. More of the sites. Let's get here. We gained 17 research, which got us a free uh, research on the refining array, which is simply the same as the cultivation uh, thing, but minerals instead of um, uh, food. Let's keep exploring a bit. Now there's a gold vein, which gives more money, basically. And nine turns away from a colonizer. Let's explore our own, close to our own territory a bit more. Might never know. And here's the fungus. When you cross that, you will actually take damage. And here's an other AI. It's a yellow one. It allows farmers to harvest resources from territories. That's actually pretty. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I had not seen this yet, this project. So. That basically means that farmers, when they're done improving terrain, can actually work as a supply crawler from say, the Alpha Centauri series. Director Eric Preston. Greetings, Admiral Haid. I'm Director Eric Preston of the Noxium Corporation. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. 
Now we think Pandora has a lot of potential for economic exploitation. So as long as you don't tamper with the markets, we should be the best of friends. Hmm. Um, let's actually exchange maps. Hoorah, comrade. Yeah, ev that's pretty cool. Every single thing you who uh, everything you say actually has very much a um, um, fancy text to it. Very much personalized for each leader and what they say and how they react. So, well, who uh, fancy looking at these ordnance maps we got? Uh, rejects to share maps, which is a shame because he wants money. Here is his first city. Ah, so names are a little bit randomized. He's already at six population. Well, I'll be there in next turn anyway. Remote autonomous harvesting. This means that farmers are actually much more useful than I originally believed, which is really good. Um, what do we have here? Electric marine propulsion. That gives us ships. Fungus cultivation. Safely grown decomposed fungus. Modular housing gives us something as well. There's all this good stuff. Anti-armor. Heavy war machines gives us tanks. I want to get tanks, so... Let's start working on tanks. Oh, you only need to unlock one to unlock the next research. That's pretty good. I want tanks. Which gives us some good stuff in between as well. We'll do uh, one more turn, just to see where we stand. And the mountain gives us a little bit more vision. Okay. So our city is now six big. In five turns we will have our colonizer. Then that project is pretty damn good. We will want a former as well. Um, how much would it be to buy? 256. Well, we could buy colonial trooper, but... Yeah. Hmm. Halbat isn't in here now. Which is a shame. I should probably queue up a Hellbat at least, because at one point the aliens will become aggressive and that will be a problem. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is so far has been the first episode of Pandora. It's a pretty, um, I like how it looks as well, very futuristic and everything. And I'm actually very interested to see how this continues on into the future. So we'll... Uh, Make sure to keep up, so make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and want to see more of it in the future. And subscribe to the channel if you actually want to see it as soon as I make it. Which should be up in two or three days, it depends on when this releases and, and when uh, other stuff I do releases. I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys later.